Well, what do you think? Should we do the last block for the Lucky Us pillow? Let's do it. Well, everyone, I thought that I'd be able to get the Lucky Us last block done along with the rainbow and the pot of gold block, but it didn't work out that way. So let's see where I left off. <laughs> Hey everyone, so if there's time, I'm gonna try and do a third block today. And um, there's a few things on this one. This will be our last block. It's the leprechaun hat. So let me go over this one. So um, this one is our biggest block, our biggest piece of fabric, and the main background for this fabric, it's the white with dots on it. White, white on white dots. Um, 10 and a half by 10 and a half. It's a big piece. Make sure to back this with feasible stabilizer so that you don't get puckering on this big, big block. You can see I have a crease down the center of mine. That's just because I kept it in my um, little packets to store everything to keep it all neat. So I need to re iron that before I get started. But um, 10 and a half by 10 and a half for your main fabric. And then for the band on the hat, the hat band is going to be cut to two and a half by four. And I did back this with feasible stabilizer. It's the black with white dots, two and a half by four. So this way, two and a half by four. That's funny. It should say four by two and a half because it actually lays sideways. But anyway, <laughs> um, the band for the hat. And then we have... Um, the crown, the hat crown, we're going to use this Kimberbell uh, leather, not leather, sorry, felt, and it is the pine color of felt. And this one we're going to cut to five and a half by six, five and a half by six for the crown of the hat. That's the main part of the hat. And then for the brim of the hat, also the green pine felt by Kimberbell. And this one is cut to two and a half by six and a half, two and a half by six and a half. Again, it lays sideways. <laughs> it should be the opposite, but anyway, two and a half by six and a half for the brim. And then for the embroidery leather, this is for the buckle. That will be really cute. Um, for the buckle, we are going to cut this to two by two and a half and it is the gold embroidery leather don't back it with anything leave it as is for the buckle of the hat that will be really really cute and then um, the last piece is the um, gold vinyl the glitter vinyl gold light gold glitter vinyl and that is one and a half by one and a half we actually only need a tiny bit of that but one and a half by one and a half and it is going to be the little center of our flower so don't forget to get your last dimensional flower these are the ones that we made before we did the vase so make sure to get your flower we'll need that and then we are going to quilt this big block. So for the quilting, I'm gonna do something a little different. I am going to use um, an echo design that Melody Hermance sent to me. Melody has been putting a bunch of um, quilting designs in our Kristen Creates group and they are free. She has been creating them herself and sharing them with all of us. So there's a bunch of them in the file section up at the top of our group. So when you get onto the Christian Creates group at the very top bar, there's like photos, videos, files, whatever. Click on the files and there's just a ton of files that she has made for us and shared with us. That was so nice of her. So she made this echo one for this hat block and you can see the echoing quilting goes around the hat and it's really, really cool. The official block uses plaid too, so you could certainly do that um, or try out one of Melody's designs. If you have a smaller hoop though, we'll need to do something different. So let's talk first about um, those with a big hoop. So the file on this is nine by nine. I think the largest point, it's nine by nine. So if you have the 9.45 by 9.45 hoop, then you'll be able to do this with the echo design if you choose. 
um, whatever quilting design that you choose, the smallest that this would be is eight and a half. So um, you would have to take out the, um, the basting stitch and the placement stitch of the main fabric for it to fit in an eight inch hoop. So if you have an eight inch hoop or an eight by 12 hoop as your largest hoop, then you would need to use software to take out the steps three and four of the quilting design to make it fit in that hoop. It's super easy to do that. I've done several videos on how to do that. You literally just delete it. Very easy to do. But if you don't have software and you don't have a machine that will let you bypass and still have the hoop in there. So my machine, I can bypass steps, but if it is outside of the embroidery hoop field, it won't let, it'll just say right from the start, no, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there are some machines, I don't remember if it's Bernina or Janome, but there's one, at least one that I know will, will say, all right, as long as you don't stitch that, I'll let you put that hoop in, in the machine. But mine doesn't let me do that. So I need to use my biggest hoop. Um, but like I said, you can take out those two steps in software very, very easily or you can do two um, hoopings of four by eight quilting. That would work perfectly fine, four by eight quilting, um, two of those. Or if you have a five by seven hoop, then you'll need to do four hoopings. So four hoopings of four by four. So it would be one here, one here, one here, one here. So very simple to do, um, but you would need four hoopings for that. And if you're doing um, the four by four, four times, you would want to choose a design that doesn't need to connect. So a standalone design, a blue design, you could do the jail designs, shamrock, you could do um, the St. Patrick's Day four, I think also the St. Patrick's three, two, and one are all standalone designs too. I think I'm not absolutely positive. Um, so look on the Kimberbell website in the blue designs and you'll see which ones are standalone designs. So anyway, you're gonna need a piece of um, batting for this. So if you're using the big hoop like I'm going to, then you want a piece of batting that's nine by nine, nine by nine batting. If you are um, doing two hoopings of four by eight, you're gonna want batting that is five by nine, two pieces, five by nine. If you are doing four hoopings of four by four, then you want four pieces of batting that are five by five each. And very doable. I will show some options, but it's uh, it's going to be a good block, and it's our last one. And one more thing, people were asking me how I will do the quilting on the hat. It comes on the design. Kimberbell did that for us. It's already on the hat. It's all there and ready for us. All we need to do is quilt the main fabric.
Hey everyone, so I finished my uh, leprechaun hat and now I'm going to do it in a couple different ways um, for those that have a 5x7 hoop or a 6x10 hoop. Um, I used my largest hoop, my 9x9.5 hoop and it worked great. I used a design that is from Melody in our um, group. She made this um, echo design around it and you won't be able to use that if you're using a smaller hoop but I, I did it for the larger hoop people if you choose to do so. Melody's going to make a couple minor changes on it and she's going to work on that before this video comes out so you should be able to do this echo design if you choose. You also have the option of um, the shamrocks or the plaid I think they used plaid too on the official one so you could do that um, but in our Kristen creates group Melody made a whole bunch of quilting designs for us and so this echo one is pretty cool so I am going to use felt for those that have a smaller hoop I am going to show you how to do it in a 6x10 hoop or in a uh, five by seven hoop. Like I said, I used my biggest hoop. So if you want to um, not have any rehooping, you would have to use uh, your nine by nine hoop. Or if you take out the stitches of uh, steps three and four for the placement and tack down of the main fabric from your quilting design, then it will fit in an eight by 12 hoop or an eight by eight hoop or it should. I'm not absolutely positive about that, but usually it will. Um, you might have to shrink it down just the tiniest bit. But anyway, I used my biggest hoop. I'm going to show another version for those that have the smaller hoop. So let's get started. All right, for those of you with a 6x10 hoop, this one is for you. I'm going to use a 6x10 hoop. I'm using cutaway just because that's what I have available. And I am going to stitch out my quilting on brown felt. This is just for a test. You're going to use the regular supplies that are listed at the beginning of this video. So this is for um, the 6x10. It is still cut to 10 and a half by 10 and a half, same as the regular directions, but I'm just using felt as a test. You're going to want to two pieces of batting that are five by nine each and a quilting design, any quilting design that you want that is four by eight, but I would suggest one that does not need to connect with each other. So like the shamrock one or any of the ones that are a standalone design, I believe I went over that in the beginning of the video. So any of the blue designs or standalone design, um, either from Kimberbell or from your collection, but four by eight quilting design. Okay, six by 10 users. So once you have the first three steps down, that's the placement and tack down of the batting and then the placement stitch for the main fabric. Then you're gonna take your fabric. Remember I'm using felt and I did mark my center with a water soluble pen right there. So I'm gonna fold that center inside and I'm just going to find my center and fold it, all right? And once you have that, you're gonna lay it down over your uh, batting and you want this side, the center, to be right on the edge of your batting and then you also want this centered. So what I do is I line it up with that little mark here, the little side hoop. So see I've got the mark right there and that's my center and then I want this right along this batting. So I'm gonna move it to right along my batting. It doesn't have to be completely perfect because um, we have two inches of extra fabric, but you want it as close as you can get it and you want your fabric straight. So that center guide is gonna be really important. 
All right, so right on that center and right on the edge of the batting, all right? And then you're gonna open it up and you can feel that that center, you can feel your batting under there and you can feel that it is right on that center line vertically and then also horizontally. And you can also feel the little notch over here. There it is. All right, and then we are going to bypass the basting stitch. If you were to run the by by basting stitch, you have that option, but it will make it so that it's out here and then your next one is gonna go over and it'll be really hard to pick it out. It's much easier if you just um, bypass the basting when you are double hooping. So to do that, let's see if I can reach around here. All right, so we are Sorry for the glare. We are currently right here on the basting stitch. So I am going to go down to the buttons down here and bypass it by hitting this down arrow for the next step. And then you can see then it shows the quilting design. So I'm just using loops as a reference. Um, you can use any four by eight that is a standalone design. There's loops and swirls from the CBT clear blue tile designs or there's a bunch of the blue designs on the Kimberbell website. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to just stitch out our quilting design now that we have our fabric um, centered and ready. All right, when that is done quilting, you can see that it is right on the edge. It is pretty much perfect. Um, so we are going to just take this out of the hoop, remove the excess stabilizer, and get ready for the next hooping. We're also going to run the first three steps, the placement and tack down on our um, batting. So we'll go ahead and go for that. Okay, we're on the second hooping. We have the first one done and the second one we have done the placement stitch and the tack down for the batting and then the placement stitch for the main fabric. So same thing as before, we're gonna fold it in half and this time we're just gonna use the batting. You can see the batting and we are going to line that up. It doesn't matter, you can do it from this side or from this side. If your quilt design is directional, then you wanna do it this, the opposite or the same way as before, but the opposite side as before. So all you're gonna do is line up, hopefully you can see this, that might be easier. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so the batting from the first one, you are going to line up with the batting of the second one and make sure and have it lined up. Sorry, I'm reaching around my camera. Um, you're going to line it up at both ends and all the way pushed up against it. You can see it here all the way. All right. And then once you've got it lined up, you're going to fold back that fabric, bring it down under your needle. And then you're going to tape in place if that's what you feel comfortable doing. All right. And then you can feel that the batting is all lined up. You saw that we lined it up and we're going to go ahead and run the quilting design. So I don't know if you saw that all. Hopefully you saw that all. But the batting, you can see it here. It's lined up on both ends and you're just folding it back under the needle and we're going to go ahead and run the quilting design on this side now. We have one 4x8 over here, we're going to do the other 4x8 over here. 
All right, and then both hoopings are done. I will unhoop it and show you in a photo, but um, that was easy. So you would unhoop this and um, get your next hooping um, as far as getting your hoop all ready for the actual hat. And you're just gonna use that center guide get that center guide under your needle when you are going to do the hat and run it just like it's a regular piece of fabric here it's all ready to go and the hat doesn't need any changes when you're using a six by ten hoop because it fits in a six by ten hoop Okay, so once you have it all um, unhooped and you've taken away the extra stabilizer or the excess stabilizer, you can see that it is perfectly lined up by matching just batting to batting. That made it very easy. And then you are going to, like I said, get a hoop ready and just use your center point. Um, I like to float it. You can float or hoop your fabric, whatever works for you. Um, and then just get started on the hat. All right, real quick for a visual. So pretend I have stabilizer in my six by 10 hoop. I would go ahead and just place this um, and then tape it in place. If I'm floating, you could um, hoop or um, you could hoop your fabric if you prefer. I like floating. But anyway, you're just going to use that center guide and then tape it in place and go ahead and start from there for your hat. So you can see the little crosshair you would use that crosshair as your guide for your middle placement and then run it from there. All right, next up is for those using a five by seven hoop. So five by seven hoop, I'm just using tear away. As an example, uh, you would use the regular uh, mesh cutaway or whatever you're using on the rest of your quilt. So start with your fabric at 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I'm using orange felt as my example, and I have marked my center with a water soluble pen. You'll want to do that and you'll want to fold both ways to make sure that you can see the seam all the way across. And then um, you will use batting. So you're gonna do four hoopings. This is a five by seven hoop, but you'll be using a four by four quilting design in four hooping so you'll want four pieces of batting in size five by five i'm just using scraps but five by five batting and we're going to do four hoopings and i'll show you it's easy don't worry and if you have the clear blue tiles you could use those so that works too but i'm going to show you this way let's get started Okay, five by seven users. So we are at the point that we have our first three steps done. That is the placement and tack down of our batting and then the placement of our main fabric. So our next step is to take our, our fabric. Don't forget I'm using this orange felt and I have ironed a crease both horizontally and vertically and I also marked my center. That can come in handy later. That's kind of optional, but anyway, at least make sure to make your crosshair of the center mark with your iron. All right, and then you're going to fold it in half. I do it on the inside part, so that mark is on the inside, and I'm folding the outside. So using my, my center uh, markings that I made, so here's my the first one so I know that it's all this way uh, vertically and then horizontally 
and I am just going to find that center again. All right, so once you have it, then this is your corner and it can go at either this corner or that corner. It really doesn't matter because we're gonna work on all four corners of our fabric. So let's go ahead and we'll start it from this corner. And the, the goal here is to get it right along the batting. So right along this batting line. You can do it the other side, this side, really doesn't matter. And then once you've got it right along this batting and straight, make sure that your fabric is straight, then you're gonna fold the top part down or bottom down, it depends on where, which angle that you decided to go for or which corner, all right? So once you have this, don't forget to make sure that your fabric stays straight, get it right along that batting, and then the top, you can feel that crease, you can feel the batting. All right, so here's our center mark, and you can feel that the batting is right on the edge there. You can also see your crease. All right, and your crease, you just wanna make sure the crease is to help keep your fabric straight. That's really important to get your fabric straight. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we have two inches extra of wiggle room, but you wanna do your best to try and um, not rush through this process. So as I see my, my crease here, I can feel my batting right there. And same thing, so I can feel my batting right along this crease up at the top here. So once you've got it where you feel that it's it's in the right position, then we're gonna go ahead and run the quilting design. So when you for, do the first three steps, the next step is that uh, basting stitch, and we don't want that, this one. So we are going to bypass that. So I do it from the button here. It's different on every machine, but that brings me to my quilting design. And I can go ahead and run my quilting design once I've got my fabric straight. So the goal here is to get one here, one here, one here, and one here, all as close to the center, um, horizontally and vertically as we can get it. And this first one is the hardest. After this first one, it's easier because we'll line it up with the batting. But the first one is the hardest. You're basically just feeling for it to make sure that your um, center guide, both horizontally and vertically, is up against the edge of your batting. All right, let me also say that if you have the clear blue tiles, then it's going to be exactly precise, and that's the easiest way. You would take your 4x4 four four tile and do right along that center guide. You would do one there and one there, another up at the top. See the crosshair right there and the crease. The crease is, is very helpful too to make sure that you're getting right in the center. And you would mark it, obviously. Mark and mark the edges too because that will tell you where to line up the next one. So that's the easiest, but you can also do it without. So I've shown that way also. Another thing that might be helpful is if you take this off the machine, bring it to a flat surface and then tape in place, you could certainly do that. I went ahead and I re-ironed mine because I've been fiddling with it so much that it wasn't very easy to see the marking. So just real quick, one more time. I fold it in half horizontally and vertically, put it up at one of the corners. Doesn't matter which one. Right along that edge, bring it down under the needle, holding it in place. And then you can feel, oh, and I did it the opposite way so I don't see my little marking. <laughs> anyway, you can feel it's right along that top of the batting and right along the edge and I can see my center crease, I'm all good. All right, all right, one more time. And I had an idea, so since I've got my creases on this top part, I put my little marking on the inside. Can you see that? So, just a thought. Because then, I can line it up. See, there's my center crease. I can line that up with the top of my batting and then have this right along the edge of the batting 
and then fold it down under the needle. And since I put my little center mark on the inside, voila, look at, there it is. How cool is that? <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea. So mark your center with the iron and put the center mark on the underside of your fabric. That works really well. All right, so you can feel the crease. You can see the crease and feel the batting on the top and the bottom, and we're all ready to go for this one. Okay, so the first one is done. You can see it is right along that top edge and along the side, perfectly done. The second hooping is easier. So let me show you that. Um, you, right now you're gonna wanna take this out of the hoop and get rid of the excess stabilizer and run the first three steps of the next hooping. Okay, we are on to the second hooping. We have the first two steps done. I just did the placement and the tack down of the batting. I am going to bypass the uh, basting stitch of the main fabric and also the placement of the main fabric. We don't really need it. You can certainly do the placement if you want. You don't wanna do the basting though because it will go over your first hooping. All right, so we have our first one done. Here is our first one. You can see the batting on the back. We are gonna use that as our guide. So you are it doesn't matter if you do this side, this side, we still have three more to do, so it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do here, and all I'm doing is I'm lining up the batting from the first hooping. See how that kind of peeks out from our fa main fabric. I'm using felt, but our main fabric. So you are just going to line up that batting right from the top and the bottom and the side. So we are just gonna line that up, very easy to do, and then hold it in place and bring it the fabric under the needle. And then you can tape it in place once you have it where you want it, you could tape if you, if you choose. So you can feel from the batting, it's already right. You really don't need to worry about it on the second hooping because you lined it up with the batting and it's all ready to go. So like I said, you're gonna wanna bypass the step to get to the quilting design. All right, let's go ahead and run that. All right, and there is our second hooping. So like I said, you want a standalone design that is not going to connect or doesn't have to line up just right. It can be however you want it to be. Um, you can see that this is just loopies and nice and easy. Nothing has to line up exactly right. But you do want it right above your um, horizontal and vertical lines. All right, so the next step, like the first, was to um, unhoop this, get rid of the excess stabilizer, and run through the first two steps, placement and tack down of the batting so that we can line it up for our third hooping. All right, once you have the first two hoopings done, we're gonna go for the third one. And the third one is simple as well. Same thing, we're going to line up the batting from the first or the second hooping, whichever that you want. Line it up so that it lines up exactly top and bottom and side with the batting from the previous hooping. And then carefully bring your fabric underneath the needle while key holding down the placement. And you can tape in place, you can check, see, perfection, look at that, nice. All right, and let's go ahead and run the third one. One more thing, don't forget to bypass the uh, basting stitch and the placement stitch of the main fabric, not in that order, opposite. Um, and also, if you are using a directional design you want to make sure to arrange your fabric in that correct way i'm doing just loops it doesn't matter it kind of actually looks more cool to have it be however but um, you do want to keep that in mind 
All right, and there is our third hooping. We just have one more. The fourth one is harder, but I will show you how. Okay, time for our last hooping. So we have three already done. Sorry, it's so close, but that's where the camera fits. Okay, so same as before, we are going to use the batting of the previous hooping to line it up. And on all three sides. So the side here and the top, actually just two sides. So from the side and from the top. And then you're going to fold it over under, sorry, fold it back over. Let me just make sure that this is straight. There we go. All right, and then hold it in place. You have to be a little extra careful because that first one is a little thicker now so just you want to just check and make sure that it is still lined up just right and you can hopefully see that down there always zoom in yeah so see right here lined up just right and then we will run our last hooping you can tape this in place if you choose and again, if you're not using a directional one like I am not, you can do it over here from the top. It doesn't matter at all. Um, I'm doing it whatever's closest to the camera for you to be able to see it. Um, if you are using a directional design, then you want to take care and get it um, the right direction. All right, let's go ahead and run the last one. All right, so I want to show you. Here are the four hoopings. It looks all great. No problem. But I want to show you, I did not do a great job on that last hooping. I is off a little bit. See the little gap? All the other ones are just perfect. That last one was not perfect. So I would recommend taking it off of the machine and centering it and not reaching around a camera. <laughs> because you do want this straight. I mean, it's you can see it's not a problem in the slightest. We have two inches extra space and it's... Um, a standalone design that doesn't need to be exactly perfect so it's not a problem at all but if you were to take it off of the machine and put it on a flat surface and get it situated just straight and then tape it in place you're not going to have this little tiny gap here so all right that's it for the quilting and then um, I'm going to show you how to do the hat all right, so for the hat, it's done in two parts. I will show you how, but I looked through the directions and it's very easy. So let's go ahead and get started on the hat. Okay, as you can see, we are gonna do the leprechaun hat in two steps. So the first one is this crown hat. Go ahead, the crown of the hat. Go ahead and, and start on that one. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna place your fabric, um, your quilted fabric on top of the hoop with your center mark in the center. So when you put your foot down, you can see the, that your needle is right in the center. And I like to use these buttons to check to make sure that my fabric is straight. This button here on my Dream Machine 2 if I click that, then I get these buttons and I can check when I press the buttons um, horizontally, I can see if it's straight by, if it's gonna run along that center line. And I can adjust as, as needed. And then also vertically, same thing, to make sure that it's straight, all right? So once you know that your fabric is straight, we're gonna go ahead and just run the leprechaun hat, the top of his hat. And I'm not gonna run through all of the steps cause I don't have more of the felt and the dimensional flower and all that, but I'm going to show you how. So this is the start, just making sure that your fabric is ready and that everything is centered.
Okay, um, you are going to stitch out the registration marks on your stabilizer, and then you're going to take a thumbtack. I don't have plain thumbtacks, but I have them on my list to get. So you are going to put a thumbtack right through the center. You can see that there's a little, um, I don't know, a little angle, and you're gonna do it right in the center and then tape it down and you're going to do that on both of them right at the center mark so it goes like this see the scent the little registration mark you're going to do it right in the center tape it in place doing this while holding a camera all right so then from there all right, see how the thumbtacks stick up? Be careful with that, of course. And then your other registration marks are on your fabric. And same thing, you're going to get it right in the center there. Mine's felt, so it'll be a little harder to get through. Here shouldn't be too bad. All right, and then same thing right at that center mark. So when I say center, hopefully you can see this. Let's try and zoom in. All right, so see the mark right there? The center of that mark is right there. So you are going to poke. I did it a little too far. All right. All right, once you have your thumbtacks through the center of these two registration marks, then you know that your fabric is in place and ready and go ahead and tape your fabric in place because that was to line up our fabric so that we know where in the hoop that this needs to go. All right, so see, we've got our fabric here. Now make sure to take these thumbtacks out. Once you have your fabric in place and taped down, make sure to take these thumbtacks out and the tape off of the back, and then we're gonna put it back in our hoop and start stitching the brim of the hat. So could we have lined that up any better? Look at that, it's right along that stitched edge and just perfectly. So that thumbtack trick is a very good one. Okay, five by seven users. So I just used felt as a test, but you can see how easy it was. It's just all, all about getting those registration marks so that you know where to place your fabric so that everything lines up right and it, it's lined up perfectly. So it's all good, it's easy to do. And um, I'll have you run through the regular instructions that I did for the larger hoop people, but mainly it's just about setting up your um, fabric so that it lines up. All right, and then all we have left is our inner borders and the flange and the backing and we'll be all done. So we're on track and we're on the home stretch. Let's finish it up. Mm -hmm. 